Hey, this is Anthony with Revzilla TV, where you can watch, decide, and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the brand new Shoei Neotech modular helmet. Now, the Shoei Neotech is the successor to the original and very popular Shoei Multitech helmet, which has been a staple of the modular lineup from Shoei and really from Revzilla for the last few years. It's been in the lineup for quite some time. It is tried and true. What they've done with the Neotech, we're actually very excited about. They've taken all of the customer feedback. They've looked at the market. They've seen the most important features to typically the, the modular helmet wearing motorcycle rider, and they've really tried to incorporate them in a very polished manner into this new helmet. Now, at first glance, you're looking at two DOT helmets, and to call them modular, if you're new to the helmet buying world, modular means the face shield flips up. It's not a smoker's helmet. It's, meant, it's really meant to allow you to flip open, get some air at a stoplight. If you need to read your map, a lot of time touring guys really like this, but you have to think that the, the new school thinking is that a modular is a preference and it typically touches on a lot of different riding styles. You really can't pigeonhole it. It's just a preference. So if we look at it, the first thing, especially for those of you out there that, are, that have known the multi-tech, have worn the multi-tech and been anxiously awaiting the neotech, the first thing I want to get into is just the key differences. There are a handful of really major changes to this helmet that dramatically push it forward. The first one is the ventilation. It, you know, Shoei right now is claiming that it is up to 300% better at venting. And what we've done is we've sat down with them, we spent time with the helmet, and we've really kind of tried to pick it apart. And there are a few key features that contribute to this, to this increase in ventilation. One is that the frontal venting systems are dramatically different. As you can see here on the Neotech, it's a different chin vent. It's a larger Ram Air style top vent. And for the first time, we're seeing a back exhaust or Venturi vent that's going to create that vacuum and suck air through. The other thing is the internal, the internal EPS and the way that the channels are formed and the length of the channels is totally different as well. The other key feature, one of the other key features that's a difference in this helmet is you're going to get a more quiet helmet. First thing you're going to notice if you compare the two of these, if I flip it up like this, you're going to see it's a much more 3D shape. It's a much more all-encompassing seal around the cheek pads, around the neck roll. I'm going to flip down this old multi-tech. I'm going to show you just how much more room you have there. And typically what we find is that, you know, it, it's, it's, it is the basis for quiet in a helmet is that you're going to, it's really about the seal at the bottom and some of the other things. The other things that contribute to quiet here on the Neotech They've changed the locking mechanism, which I'm going to walk through. They've also changed the way that the chin bar mechanism works. They've added a ridge here to quiet down any kind of turbulence that would come in and create, create noise going in that manner, you know, at speed. Another nice feature of the multi or of the Neotech that's new is the 3D shape of the comfort liner, which is now completely removable. In the original Multitech, which I have here to my left, you couldn't pull out the liner. It was a high quality liner, it was a wicking liner that was very comfortable using Shoei's premium liner, but you could not remove it. You can now absolutely remove it. The other key feature that you're going to notice with the Neotech, and I'm actually going to move this Multitech over because you know we've shown it, we're kind of finished with it at this point. The other key feature that you're going to notice is now we have a very high quality, very deep in its coverage sun visor that we have here and the mechanism is going to be on the side. It's heavy duty, it's very smooth, the mechanism isn't clunky. We've seen a lot of folks at different ranges, different price points try to do an internal sun visor. They've done it in a way that sometimes is or isn't smooth, sometimes it has clicking or a locking mechanism. Showies has a nice tension to it. It's large enough that you're going to be able to use it with a glove on. And again, getting into this ridge, which you can see here that runs up on the side, they've actually done that, that slight flare deflects air over. So again, you have this sun visor mechanism and you're, you're giving it a good chance to deflect air away from it. So again, not have something that's going to create any additional noise. Another key feature that's brand new is that the new showy shield with this, it is a step forward from the previous type of shield. It's a bit more of a wider viewport, both left to right and top to bottom, but they've also now incorporated and it comes stock, you're going to get a pin lock lens. It's a pin lock ready shield. You don't have to put the insert in, but it's going to come in the box. So the investment you make in the Neotech now gives you that pin lock visor system with the lens. You don't have to buy anything externally. And now you're without the use of an anti-fog coating, you are now using, you're now having the ability to keep your, keep your main shield from fogging up in, um, in cooler weather, in rainy weather, and it's really done without a coating. It's something, it's using that double pane construction that traps that little bead of air in there, and what it does is it keeps it from fogging up. So let's walk through the, the features at a more granular level now. Start with the outside, we can work our way in. You know, we talked about the venting, we talked about new style chin vent, again, flow, flow more air, and it's gonna be a bit more quiet. We've talked about, you know, the, uh, it's a three position 
top vent here, which is going to vent directly to the EPS. So it's half open and all the way closed. And again, by creating this distance here between the top of the shell and the top of the vent, you're actually going to scoop more air. Again, for those of you that are learning for the first time, you know, having a Venturi vent or this back vent, which is open and closable, it's actually very important because what happens is when you have a sphere moving through the air, you get this, you know, the air flows at high speed over the sphere, an area of low pressure generates back here. And what it's going to do is the airflow that comes in through the front vents that pulls the sweat away from your head, now it's being actively sucked out through the back through this vent. And the old helmet didn't have any vent at all, so you had the ability for air to kind of get trapped in there. The other nice part, I'm going to show it here really quickly, I'm going to pull my showy donut over and I want to I'm going to pull this apart in a second but down here along the bottom along the back of the shell you're going to notice that there is a channel here right at the bottom there's actually an opening and the air flows in it goes all the way down the back of your head and it actually exhausts along the neck roll as well so from a venting standpoint it's a major major step forward now, with regard to the shield and the chin bar mechanism, you're still using the aluminum, or the, it's actually stainless steel, 360 degree hinge. So it's an all encompassing hinge. See if you can get a shot of it here. Actually, right here where my finger is. I'm gonna, uh, right up here, I'm gonna show, there you go. So you can see that when I open and close it, the way that this is done, it creates a 360 degree seal around the stainless steel pin. So again, some of the other modulars on the market, they have more of a, a J-rail system that's just kind of a hook. By creating a 360 degree, almost like a scissor mechanism, you're getting a better chance of not having this chin, chin bar be, uh, be pulled up. Moving back down, looking at the face shield, you know, we talked about it. It's a step forward, you know, on the RF1100, and the new uh, X12, we saw the, the CW1 shield. This is the new style shield just for the modular. It's, you're going to be able to get smoke shields and some different things that go here. But one of the key features, again, now this is a weight saving feature, is you'll notice if I come in here on the side, you're going to notice that the shield mechanism is on the same hinge as the chin bar. It's one hinge. It actually allows you to better balance the helmet, but also by having it on a single hinge here, and I'm going to show you the difference. So if we pull my multi-tech here, I'm going to pull this guy over here for a second. See how there's two? So you're going to have, this is for the face shield, and this is for the actual chin bar. The mechanism is almost, you're having these two hinges here. By consolidating, what they've actually done is found a way to balance the helmet better, eliminate some of the weight by having two different hinges, and it allows you to really kind of offset the weight of adding this face shield or this sun, sun visor mechanism, which lives within the helmet. Now moving into the sun visor, we're going to have, it's an anti-fog, anti-scratch sun visor. And notice the coverage. It almost comes all the way down to the removable breath guards. So one of my gripes with some of the other manufacturers that we see, and some other folks that were early adopters of the sun visor system, is you didn't get full enough coverage down past maybe the bridge of your nose. It really needs to come down. The worst thing that can happen is if you have this sun visor that doesn't give you enough coverage down your face, and now all of a sudden you have this glaring area of light with a tinted area of dark, and it kind of meets somewhere in your line of sight. You don't want that to happen. So the fact that it's going to come down a lot farther is a big selling point. And remember, I removed my breath guard that comes optional in the box, and your, your chin vent here is actually going to vent up to the shield, and you can see the intakes right there as well. The other thing I want to note when we talk about the shield here is that they've eliminated that city position, that locking mechanism, which used to live right here, and it still does in the RF1100. They found for this helmet, which really a lot of times the multi or the uh, the uh, modular helmets are geared to that touring crowd that's just doing lots and lots of miles. They really looked at ways that they could make the helmet more quiet. And one of the ways that they found was by removing that external piece. And anytime you hang anything off the side of the helmet, you're going to get just something that cuts through the air and can generate wind noise that, you know, over 400 miles in a day, you might actually notice. So what they've done is they changed the locking mechanism. And now you have in the front, you have a lock down here. It's actually pretty slick. It's very subtle in its design. You know, we always say that doing something very technical and doing it in an elegant way, a simple solution to a complex problem is typically the best design. And what you have is you have this little lip that locks, you crack it, and you still have a city position there. And then from there, you go up and you have strong detents that go all the way up. And remember, you can see here that the way that this is done, again, is taking the step forward that we saw with the RF1100, which is you have a spring-loaded mechanism so that when you go down from up, what you're going to do is at the bottom position, you actually notice that it moves about a millimeter back. It locks in, that spring pulls it into place, and that actually interfaces with another new feature here for the Neotech, which is the double wall gasket design that goes all the way around the face shield. So you can see it all the way across the top. It goes down along the bottom. And what that's going to do is give you a great seal from the wind and the weather, knowing that you're probably going to ride your Multitech at longer distances in and around anything from a major a light cloudburst to major, major weather for an extended period of time. 
The other feature that's nice as well is that we have an, a ridge at the top of the face shield here. And you can see this ridge go all the way across the top. And what that ridge does is the ridge is actually cut out to interface with this double walled construction of this gasket that goes along the top. Now from a shield change mechanism perspective, it's actually no more easy or no more difficult than the RF 1100. It's a single pull, so I put my thumb down here, I'm gonna pop it, it should come right out. I can do it on both sides very quickly. And then to get rid of the pin lock, what we typically do here is pull it this way. You're gonna be able to pull your pin lock right out. There's my pin lock lens. If I don't wanna use it, I can just pull it out and notice the posts still stay intact. And then to put the pin lock back on, I'm just gonna line up my mechanism here. Go here, get my thumb in the right spot. It takes a little bit of monkey in, but it's typically not that difficult. You just have to line it up. And there we go, I'm back to square one. Now moving into the guts, let's move into the guts here of the Neotech. So the guts are gonna be different. You know, they've added a notch for, for eyeglasses wear, so you can see it straight on here, is that there is a notch right here where your eyeglasses would go. You also notice I showed the difference between the bottoms. You're gonna have your double D-ring, you still have your high-end, your high-quality, showy internal guts, but the way that the contour of the cheek pad system works now, again, creates that seal across the jawline. It's gonna be a bit more quiet. Let's start pulling this guy out. I wanna show you another feature here as well, which is going to be the way that they've incorporated these helmets so that they're gonna be predisposed for communicator systems. So there's my cheek pad. That's my left side cheek pad. And what I wanna show here really quickly, if you can come in tight, is that right around the ear you have this pad. And this pad actually locks in, there are a couple plastic tabs. And what's behind this pad is a complete cutout. I'll tell you, I ride a lot in a lot of different helmets. And I have a, a Bluetooth communicator of every different flavor that I'm constantly testing. Nothing's more frustrating that in this day and age than a high-end helmet that doesn't take into the account the fact that you're gonna be probably putting a speaker in between the inner shell and your ear itself. Now what Shoei has done is knowing, especially for this touring market, which are, I, are near and dear to my heart because they're a bit more geek focused, now we have these removable panels that have comfort padding on the back, so they're gonna be thick, they're gonna be comfortable and they're in, but when you pull them out, you're gonna notice here that we have a complete circular cutout so that when you install your Cena, when you install your Blue Ant, your Cardo, you're gonna be able to put that speaker right in there and have a nice sealed um, depression that you can nicely slide that speaker in without it giving you any undue pressure on your ear. And really it's about comfort. If the helmet fits well, if all the components come together nicely, you're not going to you're not going to be thinking about wearing a helmet and it's going to keep you more focused on the road. And really at the end of the day, that is the goal. So let's start to deconstruct our inner liner here. Now cheek pads on the Multitech were removable. That's something that we've we've seen before. You know, again, high-end cheek pad. The cheek pads on this helmet are gonna be different. They're more 3D in nature, they're more encompassing. That's a nice touch. We have our new ear pads, which I'm pulling out. The, uh, the big thing that's different here on the Neotech is the comfort liner is as a new 3D shape for fit, but it's completely removable. And you know, when we talk to the fit, the fit of this helmet really is going to be the same from what we found as the original Multitech. It's more of a neutral oval than what we see from the RF 1100 or the X12, which tend to be longer ovals or a little bit more pronounced ovals. This guy's gonna be this neutral oval. I will not call it round. You know, we see round from Nolan, we see round from HGC. This is really a still that intermediate oval, but it's a little bit less pronounced than, than what we've seen from its, its showy brethren. Now, the tabs, as I pull them out here, you're gonna see, as I pull out, it's a completely redesigned inner comfort liner. The neck roll has padding. The way that it pops in, you're gonna have four, four snaps in areas, or actually two snaps on the back, and then you have along the ridge. The reason why they do the ridge in the front with the snaps that go along the brow is that they don't wanna give you any pressure points here up above your temples. And then notice the amount of cutouts that we have here. It's going to flow a lot of air with the new re redesigned ventilation systems. It is one of the big selling points. It's one of the things that we're harping on is that one of the key negatives, or one, not one of the key negatives, but one of the things that was the feedback that we constantly got about the Multitech was that if you run hot, and you need a helmet that flows a ton of air, there are better options out there in the modular range. It was one of the few things that, 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 that the Multitech hadn't done as well as some of its competitors. And now with this helmet, it's a huge step forward. So even along the back of the neck roll here, where that exhaust vent comes all the way down the end of the, uh, the back of the channels, you're gonna see that you have the ability to get some good airflow back there as well. So as I pull my components off, let's look at the interior guts. You can see the amount of holes. Again, we talked about down here, but all of that ventilation comes in through the top Lots of big channels from both the front 
along the top. That airflow is going to make it to your head. Again, it's just optimized to get a ton of airflow through so that you're going to be comfortable even in the really, really warm times of the year. You know, from a profile standpoint, if I pull it back here to my side and take a peek at it, it is a little bit taller than the Multitech, and it's a little bit longer front to back, even though they really haven't changed the fit of it. That gives it a more aerodynamic profile. And I will tell you, one last thing I want to talk about here is this ridge across the top. So one of the nice parts is that you know with, with Shoei that you're getting a multi-density EPS. And that's, that sounds like a, a tech jargon, but the EPS is really the shock absorbing component that sits between the comfort liner and the shell itself that helps disperse that energy and protect your noggin. What, the, what a lot of folks are doing when they have this internal sun visor, I'm going to put it down here, you can see what it looks like. The sun visor has to go somewhere and it has to retract back up in between the liner and the shell. So what you're seeing is sometimes here in the brow area, folks that are they're decreasing the thickness of their internal EPS. And what Shoei's done is they said, you know what, we don't want to compromise that. We want the same density, we want it to be as protective throughout. Now remember, with a modular, you're never going to get that Snell rating. It's hard to get ECE as well. But it's a DOT helmet, but they said, we're not going to compromise in this frontal area of the helmet. So they've created this ridge actually in the shell, and they've created actually extra room so that your sun visor retracts up and actually has room without having to compromise any of the thickness of the EPS. And you know, in staying with the EPS, I also want to show one thing is that's a really nice feature here, is that on the front, and actually I'm going to pull out, it's two tabs, might as well pull out my removable chin curtain, which is another new feature. You also have EPS material that's going to live on the back of our chin bar here. So the chin bar is going to allow you to have another shock absorbing different density material that, God forbid, you are in a situation where your helmet has to do its job. You're going to have facial protection. You're going to have a little bit more um, forgiveness if your face comes in contact with the front of the chin bar versus if it was just hard plastic or if it wasn't built to be a safety feature. Now, three shell sizes are available. Again, it's a composite shield. It's that same aim shield that we see for newer style showies. You know, the three different sizes of shells are going to give you the ability. It allows them to use less material and really do a more tailored fit. So, you know, if you're wearing a large, it's, uh, you're not having a shell that has to accommodate all the way up to an extra, extra large. A lot of the guys that use, you know, only a few different shell sizes typically then are just changing the interior guts. And sometimes you can end up wearing a little bit more helmet or a little bit bulky over helmet than you're looking for. So in summation, really what they've done here with the Shoei Neotech is they've just taken, again, a lot of the guts, a lot of really the, the basis and foundation that they, they created, they learned, they were, they were very successful with the Multitech, and they've taken just about every component and they've pushed it forward. So in our eyes, this is going to be one of the staple modulars. Really, it's, it's, it's really well suited to compete with some of the other high-end modulars that you see on the market, and honestly, there are only a few of them as we move into two 2012 and beyond. We want to know what you think of the Shoei Neotech. So if you're, if you're just seeing it for the first time, if you're currently riding in it, let us know your feedback on Facebook, on our YouTube channel. Like it, dislike it. Leave us a comment. We want to hear what your first reactions are. Also subscribe to us on Revzilla TV and our YouTube page. We do new gear reviews as we get our hands on the product, as we spend time in it and review it. And we're happy to keep you posted as we continue to roll things out. If you have any questions about the Shoei Neotech, modulars in general, or the fitment of the helmet, or any of the features, shoot us a line. See us at Revzilla.com or 877-792-9455. As always, it's over 30 bucks. We'll happily ship it to you for free. We'll exchange for free. Send it back to us in new condition. No restock fee if you don't like it. And you can earn Teamzilla cash on any order over 100 bucks to be applied to your next order. Save you some money in the long run. Thank you for watching our in-depth and detailed breakdown of the new Shoei Malt or Shoei Neotech modular helmet available at revzilla.com slash Shoei. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.